Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin Pierre, and on today's episode we're going to be going back over to Jameson to check out another one of their core range. Now, I've accidentally skipped a step here, usually I should have gone to the Crested, I have done the rest of them in, in order, but I've accidentally skipped ahead just by grabbing something off the shelf to review. Today we've got the Jameson Black Barrel, wee little sample size that I picked up when I was in Dublin Airport, and I bought the pack of them. So the last one I'll have to do is the Crested, and I'll get to that at some point in the future. If you really want to see that review, let me know in the comments below. This one is a little bit different to the normal range. We've seen so far the standard Jameson, bog standard as you get everywhere in the world. Then we've seen the stout cask mate. I didn't do the IPA because it wasn't in my little pack, but it's not that I don't want to cover that. I actually have to say I do prefer the stout to the IPA. That's a kind of cask experiment with some stout and some IPA. Now we've got the black barrel, and that's basically some, some of the liquid, not all of the liquid, some of the liquid, which has been pot stilled. This is a, a larger portion of the blend is now pot stilled, allegedly. A lot of the standard Jameson would be just grain whiskey. The portion that's been pot stilled will now be aged in kind of twice charred barrels. Apparently first fill, so they say. So it stands to reason that if you like the standard Jamesons and you want something with a little bit more character, a little bit more depth, then this might be up your street. But let's get into it and see what we've got, shall we? Under the latest whiskey coin, of course. Now, uh, I don't often talk about colour, but it's a nice colour, probably added colour. It's a 40 percenter. In the UK, it's roughly 30 to 35 pounds. I don't know what this goes for in a uh, territory near you, but hopefully not too expensive. It is the most expensive of their standard range, and they do have some other special bottlings as well that go for a bit more, but for the readily available stuff, this one's the most expensive. Let's get into the nose and see what we've got. Now, off the bat, it's got a, a really quite lovely nose. It's very light and floral. It's a little grassy. Quite a lot of oak in there as well, as you might expect. On the back end, some vanillas, some kind of uh, citrusy, kind of fruity smells as well. Let's get onto the palette. Wow, okay. So for me, that initial mouth fill, you've got about two and a half, three seconds to decide what you think about this whiskey, I think. Because very quickly, a lot of those lighter, sweeter flavors, like some honeys and vanillas and things like that, they're very much quickly overtaken by some high smoky spice. And I'm not talking about peat smoke here. I'm just talking about a very, very, very light waft that kind of charred oak that you would expect from something so heavily charred. But it's really kind of spice, cinnamon, lead. Which I don't mind, actually. I don't mind. Let's have another little sip. It's very bold, very bold flavours. On the back end, it's got that indicative grain note about it, youthful grain. For me, I always think it's a little bit gassy youthful grain, not in the kind of fizziness to it, but there's a kind of like a an air about it. It's really hard to pin down an actual flavour to it, apart from if you know what you're looking for in grains, but maybe you'll know what I'm talking about if you've tried these things. And I have to say, oddly, not my favourite in the uh, in the range so far. Uh, I'm a big fan of Standard Jameson's. It's um, not the nicest whiskey I've ever tried in the world, for sure, but it's a worthy addition to anyone's shelf, especially if you want to diversify between Scotch and Irish and whatever. But it's super cheap and nice to have around. And if it's uh, if I'm in a pub or whatever and they really don't have anything at all, you can almost guarantee they're going to have Jameson. They're going to have Jack Daniels, but you know I'll always pick Jameson. Then the Stout Edition, really like that. That is by far the standout of the range so far. I haven't tried the Crested yet. This falls short a little bit for me, especially for the extra increase in price. I think that it's got some nice flavour to it. It's nice depth to it. But there's, there's still too much of that grain in there for my liking. It doesn't really round it off. It's all very in your face. It doesn't really taste that well balanced to me. That's just me. It's uh, still reviewed very well, broadly. And I think it's a, a worthy thing to try. But if you're looking for one bottle in the Jameson's range, I don't think this one's it. But that's for another story. That's a kind of cask motherfucker. <laughs> 